Hello, in this video we're going to look at monopoly profit maximization when dealing with a CES production function. Here's the setup. We have a firm who has the following production function. Faces an inverse market demand. Price equals 105 minus 0.5Q. The wage is $10 and the price of capital is $10. We want to solve for the profit maximizing price, output, level of labor, level of capital, and profit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the marginal product to labor. So we take the partial derivative of the production function with respect to L, and we get back the following result. So bring this 2 down in front, subtract 1 from that exponent, and then we're going to look inside and then take the derivative of L to the 0 0.5 power, and we get this right here, 0 0.5 L to the minus 0 0.5. And this 0 0.5 times 2, that cancels, and we're left with the following. And taking a partial derivative of the production function with respect to capital, we get a similar looking result. Moving on. Setting up our cost minimizing condition, the marginal product of labor divided by the wage equals the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital. And I'm going to substitute in for our marginal product of labor that we just found and the marginal product of capital that we just found over here. I could also substitute in the wage and price of capital, but I'm going to do that uh, at the end. So now just simplifying this, multiplying through by W. And then you'll notice uh, we can cancel the terms and parentheses on both sides. And then following the rules of exponents, we'll move this L to the minus 0.5 down into the denominator. Likewise, doing a similar thing for capital. And now cross multiplying. And now to get rid of this K to the 0 0.5, we're going to square both sides. And we have this expression here. And if we were to solve this expression for L, we have the following. We'll come back to these two expressions in a second. So that K expression that we just found, we're going to now plug that into the production function. Where we have K, we're going to plug in W over R, which is all squared, times L. So making that substitution into the production function, and now simplifying, so the 0.5 times 2, that'll just leave us 1, and then we have L raised to the 0.5 power. And now we're going to take the square root of both sides. That'll get rid of this 2 over here in the exponent. And now on the right-hand side, we'll factor out L to the 0 0.5 power. And now dividing through by the term in parentheses. And now let's square both sides. We have the following. And now we found on the first slide, we found that... Uh, we just basically took this term right here that I'm circling with my mouse, and we solved it for L. So after solving it for L, let's now plug that into the production function. So making that substitution and simplifying. It'll simplify in a very similar manner that we just went over here on the left. We get the following, taking the square root of both sides, and then factoring out k to the 0 0.5 on the right-hand side. You know, basically doing all these steps here, we'll get this result. So we just found the conditional input demands. Okay, so the last slide basically gave us the firm's conditional input demands, conditional on the level of output by the firm, Q. Now let's construct the firm's cost function. Cost equals W times L plus R times K. And where we have L, we're going to replace it with the conditional input demand for labor. And where we have K, we're going to replace that with the conditional input demand for capital, making that substitution. And now let's solve for marginal cost, taking the derivative of the cost function with respect to Q. We get this result right here. So now we can plug in W equals 10 and R equals 10 into our marginal cost. And we see that the firm will have a marginal cost constant at $5, given these input prices. So once we got marginal cost, we can start with a standard profit maximization, setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. 
So we take the inverse market demand, and from that we're going to get revenue. Revenue is price times quantity, so where I have P, I'm replacing that with the inverse market demand. And then taking the derivative of this revenue equation, we get 105 minus Q. Setting 105 minus Q equal to the marginal cost that we found is $5. Solving for Q, the firm will produce 100 units of output. And we'll set a price of $55 per unit, plugging that 100 back into the inverse market demand. In terms of the quantity of inputs to hire, take our conditional input labor demand, and we can evaluate it at the input prices and the quantity of output, and the firm will use 25 units of labor. And the firm will also use 25 units of capital. In terms of profit, profit is revenue minus total cost. So revenue is 55 times 100, price of 55 times the quantity of output. And the cost of labor here is the price times the quantity of labor used. And the cost of capital is the price of capital times the quantity of capital used. So we get a profit of $5,000. Okay, that's it.